Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and I think we all need a full account of the TVA from the Loki series. Like episode by episode throughout seasons one and two, we were kind of given a different understanding of what its purpose is, how the agency was created, who was really in charge. But now that some time has passed since the finale, I think we finally have some clarity on what He Remains was really planning throughout this whole season. So I'm gonna break it down, and really it starts with two questions. What was Obi's actual role in all of this, and why when Loki was first pushed out of the Citadel in the season one finale, did he immediately time slip back to an earlier era of the TVA before the timekeepers. By the way, if you're seeing less of me on the channel this month, it's because I have gone on paternity leave. My baby might be arriving a bit sooner than expected, so we're playing it safe. Jessica Clemens is back to cover for me. Thanks, Jessica. And thanks to everyone of the New Rockstars team who's gonna be stepping up this month, popping up in videos, doing me a huge solid, and I appreciate the full New Rockstars team. I'm gonna be back in a few weeks, but I'm just so excited to watch their videos with Baby Boss. Okay, throughout Loki season two, we wondered whether it was he Remains or Victor Timely or OB or someone else who originally created the TVA. The Loki finale leaves it still a bit murky, but according to He Remains, it was still he who paved everything. And that includes every step of the way that Loki took in season two. When Loki circles back to He Remains in the Citadel, He Remains indicates that everything he went through in season two was also part of his design. This isn't the first time we've had this conversation. How did you know? I know about the slipping. And who do you think paved that road? He who remains. Bingo. So he taunts Loki, saying Loki thought he was slipping through time, sticking it to the system, gonna beat the man, but then whoop, here he is, and he asks, did you really think I was gonna sit back and let her kill me? So really, everything that He Remains did this season is just because he didn't want to have to deal with Sylvie. That Sylvie was someone who would not negotiate. Maybe Loki would be more willing to hear him out. And He Remains indicates that he also knows all about Victor Timely and this supposed scaling problem of the temporal loom that seemed to be the major crisis of this season. No, there's no, there's no problem. The temporal loom is a failsafe. It deletes the ones that aren't supposed to be there. Everything except the sacred timeline. In the TVA, well, that's just that's just collateral damage. No, no biggie. Easy to rebuild. So this line really says it all. He remains created the TVA, the story that he told in season one that he used Elioth to prune all the other timelines, to win the multiversal war, to build the TVA. That was all true. But what he left out was Renslayer. Renslayer helped him tame Goliath, helped him win the multiversal war. And shortly after that, he used Protocol 42 to wipe her memory and just make her kind of like a Minuteman hunter of the TVA and then later on a judge. But he built this apparatus of a loom to kind of automatically prune the sacred timeline into one braided strand. And that loom has in it a failsafe so that if it ever gets overloaded, which it does from time to time to time, it automatically just prunes everything so you don't have to rely on the professionalism of the TBA workforce. The TBA melts down, everyone in it dies and spaghettifies, and then it just gets rebuilt over and over and over again. And he remains, oversees it all, sitting in a chair by himself in the Citadel, just twiddling his thumbs. And when it comes to the season one finale leading into this season, the implication really is that he remains sent Miss Minutes and Renslayer to deliver a TBA handbook to Victor Timely in 1868 Chicago, so that Victor Timely in 1893 would be a Chicago-based inventor and a kind of con man who did a lot of writings, but an inventor way ahead of his time whose writings would inspire people like a Caltech theoretical physics professor turned science fiction writer A.D. Doug. And when OB in the TVA meets Victor Timely, the two geek out over each other. You wrote the TVA handbook. But I learned everything I know from a brilliant 19th century inventor named Victor Timely. So if your work is based on his work and his work is based on your work. Exactly which came first. It's like a snake eating its own tail. So we get this little pocket paradox, as I'm gonna call it, and this was deliberately created to be a self-contained Ouroboros, a snake eating its own tail, and that's why OB has this name. He remains, upon his death from Sylvie's stab, had in place a plan to launch a variant, Victor Timely, on a road that he paved to inspire OB for these two to meet and for this little Ouroboros to be just a little kind of distracting tornado in the TVA to just cause everyone to scramble over the temporal loom meltdown, when really, it was never that much of a risk to the TVA because the TVA could always be rebuilt this was just designed to do one thing, to manipulate Loki into learning how to control time slipping so that Loki could make it back to He Remains in the Citadel and that these two men could talk without the pesky Sylvie interfering. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. You can love holiday season and also admit that it's stressful. Travel, time with family, marking time with New Year's, it can be a lot. And if you feel like you could use a little help with it all, try connecting with a licensed therapist by using BetterHelp. Starting therapy can be hard. The right therapist for you may not be in your area and some people struggle with the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, even via messaging if you prefer that, whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. Just 
just click the link in the description and answer a few questions about what you're looking for from therapy and what your preferences are. BetterHelp will then match you with a therapist from their network that's right for you. If you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a therapist for no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. If you think that you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash new rock stars. Clicking that link helps support this channel and also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so that you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Now, why, when Sylvie pushed Loki out of the Citadel in the season one finale, did he go back to an earlier era of the TDA before the Timekeepers, when the agency statues showed he remains appearance? Like, we did not see Loki's body time slip physically, you know, like where his limbs kind of turn into stretchy, gross bubblegum and his face contorts around. That did not happen when he fell through the door. So he didn't time slip, he was placed here. Sylvie didn't do it, she was just using He Remains Tempad. He Remains Tempad was rigged and preset so that when Sylvie used it to push Loki through the door, Loki would fall into that earlier era. Why did He Remains set it that way? Because he wanted to initiate Loki's time slipping glitch. He cursed him so that he would be time slipping. He would give Loki this hurdle to overcome, but more importantly, a new skill to use, a way back to him, so that Loki can cognitively just kind of think and unstick himself from time and loop back earlier to his life path and find his way back to the Citadel. He also, I think, did this because he wanted to take Loki back to an earlier era where there was some other past temporal loom crisis underway to show him that temporal loom meltdowns are a recurring thing in the TBA, so that when he tells this to Loki later on, Loki will believe him. Now, of course, when they end up talking in the Citadel, Loki surprises he remains with his own new power status. He quotes a T.S. Eliot poem that he remains doesn't recognize, and he kind of turns the tables on he remains to declare himself more in control of pausing time and time slipping than he remains expected him to be. And I think right here is something we have to recognize that I don't think we've really talked about. Loki figured out how to time slip organically with just his body in mind. He remains cannot do that. He needs technology. He needs that master temp pad. Without it, I don't think he could pause time and rewind and loop things as well as he can. So why can Loki do it and he remains can't? Well, because he remains at the end of the day is just a man. Loki is a god. He was a god of mischief. Now he's a god of stories. His body can resist the flow of time because as guardians and frost giants age slower than the humans of Earth do. So by teaching Loki time slipping, just because he remains couldn't convince Sylvie of his argument, he remains made a huge mistake. He gave a god the powers he himself can only achieve through technological wizardry. Now, the only things that separate these two are knowledge and resolve. Loki gains knowledge in the scene. He looks at he remains equations on the chalkboard and realizes that he can build a more functional loom and Loki gains resolve by having final conversations with Mobius and Sylvie before he makes a final walk toward the core. So as we head into Avengers Kang Dynasty, He Remains Legacy will not be the Kang variant who remained, who cleverly tamed Goliath and vanquished all other Kangs by pruning their timelines. He Remains is going to be known among the Dynasty as the Kang who made the greatest mistake that any Kang has ever made. He gave the opposition the powers that only Kangs are supposed to have, and he gave the Avengers a loophole into defeating the Kang Dynasty. All the Avengers are going to have to do is align with someone that most of them have only known as a monster. So I want to know from you, what do you think about this theory? Comment down below and a reminder that it is ho 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 season at New Rockstars. So support us by grabbing one of those holiday designs from nerdriot.shop. I'm going to be back from my paternity leave in just a few weeks. Big thanks to Jessica Clemens and the whole New Rockstars team for covering for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.